Hi everyone, I am Dr. Sagar Sahu and welcome to Vet Surgery DH. So today I welcome you to another lecture on anesthesiology. Today we will be dealing with the dissociative anesthetics. You might be uh, familiar with the name ketamine. Okay, if anyone, if you will ask any student that what is a dissociative anesthetic, then he or she may tell you about ketamine because that is the only drug you know about dissociative anesthetics. But it in this class you will be knowing there are also other dissociative anesthetics and we will know all about them. Today you have an assignment actually. Okay, you see you might have heard about the xylazine ketamine protocol. Okay, it is one of the best protocol. For me, it is the best protocol because for every species in entire world, name it any wild animal or any pet animal or domestic animal, you will find a protocol of xylazine ketamine for them. Okay, why they are best? In this video, I will be giving the hints where these both drugs, the xylazine and the ketamine, where they complement each other or they negate each other side effects. Okay, so you have to uh, make a note or you can say you have to point uh, point out those uh, mentions where i will be giving uh, regarding the xylazine ketamine protocol okay so note down all the points and comment down below let us see how much attentive you are in this class okay let us start about uh, the class which is dissociative anesthetics okay so the agents which are used as dissociative anesthetics are phencyclidine, teletamine and ketamine okay you are very familiar with ketamine okay because all in almost all veterinary colleges of india you will find the use of ketamine whether they are combined with xylazine or diazepam okay diazepam is a benzodiazepine so if you will consider regarding the potency of these three drugs phencyclidine will come as one teletamine the least potent is ketamine but it is the most famous one okay but the drug teletamine usually comes in combination with zolazepam which is a benzodiazepine okay in the brand name telazol uh, zolatil or telazol these two brand names are very famous which contains the teletamine and the zolazepam in a fixed combination the dissociative anesthetics produced very good somatic analgesia. Somatic analgesia means the skin and the superficial muscles. Okay, you can say integumental system and the superficial musculoskeletal system. You will find a very good analgesia. Point, note the point. Xylazine, on the other hand, xylazine is a very good, produces very good visceral analgesia. Okay. So when you will combine the xylazine and ketamine, it, xylazine will produce the visceral analgesia and the ketamine will produce the somatic analgesia in combination, there will be both visceral and the somatic analgesia. So in turn, in combination, they produce very good analgesia. You can say here they complement their actions. In uh, uh, dissociative anesthetics, you will find the poor muscle relaxation. In uh, You can say muscle rigidity. The muscular rigidity you will find when you use you will use the dissociative anesthetic you see these effects are studied when the drugs are used alone okay suppose if you will combine the ketamine which produces the muscular rigidity along with the diazepam which is a very good muscle relaxation which causes very good muscle relaxation you may not find this muscular rigidity here the xylazine also produces very good muscle relaxation okay so you can say the side effect of this ketamine or the side effect of this dissociative anesthetic is negated by the xylazine okay and this is some basic introduction let us go to our mechanism of action how they act the so basically they interrupt the ascending transmission between the conscious and the unconscious functional part of the brain you can say they disrupt the flow mechanism or they dis uh, disrupt the flow of information between these two part the conscious and the unconscious you, on the other hand you can say they produce a state of hyper excitation hyper excitation okay due to this feature due to this particular feature the hyper excitation this drug is abused okay 
abused by the abusers this is that is the reason why nowadays it is very difficult to get ketamine over the counter okay you have to write in your registration pad then and only the pharmacist will dispense the ketamine okay so it produces basically the cataleptoid state this state of hyperexcitation there is a particular name cataleptoid state or you can say it produces catalepsy but the recent if you will follow the recent articles you will find the act by the nmda receptor antagonist they act as antagonist to this nmda nmda receptor n methyl d aspartate nmda receptor and and they produce all those action we will see the pharmacodynamics also okay let us go to that first the nervous system okay because they have very if uh, profound effect on the nervous system and you should know about this one they produce hypotonus skeletal muscle movement you can say purposeful voluntary movements you can also say convulsions but convulsions is not exact term you can say just muscular contractions okay but for your understanding is that convulsions okay or you can say seizures they produce seizures but one more thing you should remember if a dog or cat whatever if they have a history of seizure earlier they have seizures this dissociative anesthetics or you can say ketamine or teletamine whichever you are using they do not promote this seizure activity okay there is no evidence that those uh, agents will promote this seizure effect but you should avoid using of this ketamine in uh, patients which have who have history of seizure okay this dissociative anesthetics can be used epidurally you, you can use the ketamine sole as sole epidural anesthetic or you can combine with xylazin and you can give epidural injections remember when they are used epidural the action is same they only produce the somatic analgesia okay they don't produce the visceral analgesia and our nervous system will find increase in cerebral blood flow and also you will find increase in intracranial pressure uh, recent articles suggest that the increase in cranial pressure is due to decrease in venous rhythm okay also they increase the csf cerebrospinal fluid pressure I already told you they produce muscular rigidity. When you will, uh, the, when the xylazine is used in combination, xylazine produces very good muscle relaxation. So in combined, the xylazine usually negative this muscle rigidity. And also you can combine with diazepam, which is also a very good muscle relaxator. Okay, you can combine with diazepam to negate this effect, this muscular rigidity. During time of time of the recovery, you see. Here you should know a particular concept. Suppose this is the timeline of surgery. Okay, there is a period of pre-anesthetic when you are giving the periodic uh, pre-anesthetic. Then there is period of induction. Then this is maintenance. Okay, suppose you have used in as pre-anesthetic. The common protocol is atropine and xylazin. You have used this atropine and xylazin. For induction you have used ketamine. Okay, see here. The xylazine has usually the effect is for 20 to 25 minutes. 20 to 25 minutes. You have given the pre-anesthetic during this period. After 20 to 25 minutes, the xylazine effect will be gone. And suppose you are maintaining with only ketamine, that is, you do not have inhaled anesthetics. So you are maintaining with ketamine okay when the xylazine effect will be fading out or when the xylazine effect will be gone the when you will be maintaining with ketamine the effect of only ketamine will be there you might be seeing after giving the xylazine ketamine at the induction after some time when you will be administering my maintenance bolus of ketamine you will find the convulsions in animals that is only because this period in the, the xylazine period is now over you are only giving ketamine and the effect of ketamine is now produced so you if you want to avoid this effect you can combine with don't combine again the xylazine because they have very profound sedative effect you can use the diazepam you can use the diazepam ketamine combination they are very very safe they are very minimalistic 
uh, action on the cardiovascular system and also respiratory system. You can use rhizobium ketamine conversion during this period and you may not find this conversion. So if you have not used this combination, only you are maintained with ketamine, during time of recovery you will find the ataxia sensitive to touch while you will touch the animal will react violently okay sensitive touch and sometimes even the violent recovery okay remember the concept next we will go for the cardiovascular system what are the effect on the cardiovascular system it has a positive inotropic effect inotropic means it increases the force of contraction okay it has a positive inotropic effect you will find trachycardia you see in case of xylazine which causes bradycardia, which is a negative effect of xylazine. Okay, if you want to know more about xylazine, I have already made a video regarding the alpha 2 agonist, you can check them out. Okay, because xylazine produces bradycardia, which is basically sinus bradycardia, while the ketamine produces tachycardia. So, in the both negate each other's effect. But the in xylazine ketamine combination, overall, you will find some tachycardia. Okay. They increase the arterial blood pressure. You see xylazine which reduces the blood pressure or you can say it causes hypotension. Okay, here also the xylazine ketamine combination balances the blood pressure. Okay, the arterial blood pressure is increased when the dissociative anesthetics are given. It is due to the due to tachycardia you will find the high cardiac output. Due to tachycardia and the high cardiac output you will find the arterial blood pressure rise. But they relax the smooth muscles of the endothelium or you can say blood vessels. So you will find vasodilation. This is very much contradictory, but in books you will find it causes vasodilation. But due to increase in heart rate and also cardiac output, you will find rising blood pressure. Okay. Next we will come to the respiratory system. In respiratory system, they usually don't depress the ventilatory response, or you can say <coughs> Uh, they do not have much effect on the respiratory rate or like that all the features of respiration but one thing you have to remember it increases secretions that is bronchial secretion bronchial secretion it increases bronchial secretions okay and one more thing uh, we are talking about secretion it also increases salivation you see here the xylazine also increases salivation okay due to which you have to pre-administer with atropine so this xylazine ketamine protocol is usually when, especially when they are used in small animals you will find use of atropine the atropine xylazine and ketamine combination okay so here comes the role of atropine okay but if the animal is properly fasted, you may not need atropine. You have to keep the atropine handy to avoid any further complications or problems. Okay. Now, this is very important. Sometimes asked in bio examiner, uh, bio examiner, or you can say in exams also. The laryngeal and pharyngeal reflex remain patent, partially patent or fully maintained in case of dissociative anesthetics. But when they are used, the pre anesthetics are used like xylazine or ketamine, you may not find this reflex more patent. Or you can say, why this is important? This reflex is very important for endotracheal intubation. I have already discussed during the stages of anesthesia while we are discussing, this reflex are very much important for endotracheal intubation. Okay, if you are using ketamine as sole anesthetic, this reflex will remain maintained and you may not able to, the, may not able to intubate the endotracheal tube. Okay, so for the better endotracheal intubation, you have to use some pre anesthetics like xylazine or diazepam. So, swallowing reflex usually diminished. Okay, this one is very important. Okay, many a time examiners ask to confuse you. Okay, next the pharmacokinetics. Okay, we are done with pharmacodynamics. One more thing, it also increases intraocular pressure in pharmacodynamic effects. It also increases the intraocular pressure, ocular, ocular effect. Now the pharmacokinetics. This is a very rapid onset of action when given intravenously. They have very rapid, within minutes the animal will sleep. Okay. And one more thing. Why xylazine ketamine is very famous? You see, two protocols along with ketamine is very, very famous. One is xylazine ketamine, another one is diazepam ketamine. Xylazine ketamine can be administered intramuscularly. 
but the diazepam ketamine is given intravenously so in fractious animal which is very vicious animal the iv administration is very difficult so you have to give intramuscular due to you can say it is very suitable to administer whether intramuscular or intravenous that is why jalizin ketamine protocol is very very famous especially in wild animals you will find jalizin ketamine protocol for very wide range of animals because you have to give intramuscular by tranquilizing or there you can't give intravenous anything so this is why this protocol is very very famous or this you can say for me this is the best protocol okay so next they are transformed or they are metabolized by the liver usually glucuronide conjugation okay and you can see this hepatic biotransfusion is less in cats that is why the ketamine should be used in cautiously in cats they are excreted by the kidney you know, one more thing in hepatic biotransfusion there is a product which is formed by the, from the ketamine which is nor ketamine nor ketamine which causes maximum you can say damage okay it is excreted by the kidney it has very rapid recovery this uh, question has been asked i think in our state opsc examination okay why the animal recovers rapidly due to the ketamine when given ketamine it is because of redistribution okay what is redistribution when you will giving a drug it will go to the brain okay but after some time it will be redistributed to different part of the body usually the fat lung liver and kidney when they will be redistributed the effective concentration on the brain will diminish the animal will recover and remember this fat that is why when ketamine when you maintain ketamine for a long surgery using this ketamine only in fatty animals the animal will take more time to recover more time to recover because the uh, ketamine will be redistributed and deposited in fat so in fatty animals it should be used cautiously okay so this is basically all about the dissociative anesthetics now it's your job find out where i have mentioned regarding the jalazin ketamine protocol where they complement each other where they negate each other and point out in the comment section below okay so this is all about today we'll meet in the next class when we will be starting the inhalant anesthetic till then see you tata bye bye take care